further ado, I will bring you the gentleman that created the video, Chris. Thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you very much, Dan, and thank you, Dr. Vaneff, for uh, having uh, us come out to Sky Studios. Um, my name is Chris Kiefer. I'm the executive director and owner at Sky Studios. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about smiles, which you guys are probably pretty familiar with, uh, but in particular uh, for the millennial generation. So uh, very briefly, Sky Studios uh, started back in 2013, just a few years ago, um, and we are a digital media agency that focuses in working with businesses that are trying to market towards millennials. Uh, and the content that we are creating for you guys uh, that are looking to reach millennials is uh, bold, innovative, and authentic. So before, this is one of my favorite things to do during presentations because it's not fun to listen to me talk the whole time. Pull out your cell phones and you're gonna text. It's just a regular text message, so if you have a phone you can do this. And we're gonna do a survey instantly with everyone in the room. So you're gonna text the number 22333 and then in the actual message part you're going to text BOS one. And then the first question that you're going to answer is what comes to mind when you think of millennials? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Okay. So lazy ungrateful. This now we're getting to some real stuff. This is good. <laughs> it's amazing when you take away the names from the responses, all of a sudden the truth comes out. So, um, great. Okay, so the, uh, the next thing is what are millennials, obviously. So millennials that we're talking about are age 16 to 35. That varies a little bit depending on the group that you're talking to, but roughly um, the way the research that we've done on millennials is looking at how uh, millennials are the largest buying generation in history. Uh, a lot of the people are growing. The, I mean, millennials are now getting to that, you know, the 25 to 30 year old range, 35, and they're starting to have kids and they're starting to buy things for their kids. And the, a couple other interesting notes about millennials is that they've grown up with the internet, they've grown up with technology, and they seek experts. They trust experts more then they trust people that they know. So I don't know how many of you have kids that are in the millennial range, but how many times have you said over and over and over the same thing to them and they you know, repeat it a bunch of times and they are not whatever, they're doing their own thing. And then all of a sudden one day they come back and say, hey, guess what I just heard on so-and-so who is an expert or a teacher told them or they saw it on YouTube or something and now they believe it because it came from an expert in the field as opposed to their parents who they know and trust and should realize that they, that's the reason that they exist. But it's another, another conversation for that. But they also, they want transparency. They want to know, they don't want the idealized version of the world. They just want, they're smart enough now and there's enough content out there that they know when uh, things aren't real and it's not exactly what's happening. So being transparent is very, very important and millennials are looking for that authentic, just this is who we are, we're not hiding anything, you know, here's our practice, very, very open. Um, and then the last thing I think is really important, important is that they are more interested in buying experiences than they are products. So we'll get to that in just a second. Now I want to go back in time. Uh, this was a picture of me taken last week. Uh, <laughs> back when I was, I think, I don't know, fifth grade or something. And the reason I bring this picture and this story I want to tell you is uh, my, I'm the middle of five kids, and every single one of the, the kids in our family all had to have orthodontics or uh, ortho treatment of some sort. So my family is what you guys like to call job security. And uh, we, whatever happened with genetics, we've uh, definitely done our fair share of support for the dental industry. My brother, as you can see, big underbite right there. I had lots of spacing. I now still am going back for my third orthodontic treatment because as I got older and grew up, my jaw apparently grew when I was 24 and then teeth started hitting weird. Anyways, so I'm back uh, visiting my orthodontist again. So the story I wanna tell about my personal experience with smiles is back at Carroll College. 
I played basketball at Carroll, and in the um, one day at practice, uh, we do our lifting regimen, and we were doing push press. So I don't know how many of you guys know what a push press is, but you got the big barbell bar, and you kind of squat down and throw your arms above your head, and Dentist, you guys probably know where this is going. I'm telling a personal story about a big heavy metal bar going past my face. And I was doing last lift of the day, you know, six reps, seven reps, eight, smash the bottom of my uh, jaw. And, ooh, it's hard to see. That's uh, right here. This was, I took it in the locker room on an old cell phone of mine. But this right here is chipped off. And then this got chipped and my... Uh, uh, canine got chipped as well. So immediately you can also see that I still had, you know, really bad spacing. I'll get back to what happened there in a second. Now going back to uh, this presentation, in working and when Dr. Beneff invited us to come speak here tonight, our company specializing in marketing to millennials, uh, we've, we've done some work with dentists um, and the work that we've done with video and websites has been very good, but by no means are we a dental marketing agency like Dan or um, Matt with um, Hook SEO or WEO Media. However, like with any other client, we started reverse engineering. So if I was a millennial, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go on my phone or my computer in the area that I'm in and I'm gonna type in the word or the thing that I want. So that's exactly what we did. We typed in dentist, our office is in Hillsborough, Oregon, came up with 70 results on Google Maps, and we took all that data, and we came up with 15 questions, and then uh, we hit the phones. So uh, me and Pat in our office over a two-day period spent hours and hours, over 100 phone calls, and got in touch with 60 dentists, and we got 15 responses to the survey. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not. This is our spreadsheet that I made. You know, I'm an engineer. I love the numbers and analytical data and everything. So we did learn a couple things. The first thing that we learned was that office managers don't like taking surveys from telemarketers, <laughs> which is why we only got 25% response rate. A couple of the interesting findings from that was that 40% of the people that responded said that their heavily or that their website had been heavily updated or redesigned within the last year. So that's, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. For the most part, almost half have been fairly up to date on their website. So that's good. Um, the other part is 64% uh, of dentists have no marketing budget. So Dan, in your presentation, talking about having a budget and then the other interesting fact in that 64% group, 85% of them said that their largest lead source was referrals. So again, we're all very smart people in this room. It's not surprising that if, you're, if, you, if most of the people don't have a marketing budget or if you're in the group that doesn't have a marketing budget, obviously you're going to be getting most of your clients from a referral source. Now that's not bad. That means to me a couple things, that you're an honest person, you run a good practice, and your clients are at least happy enough that when their friend says, hey, I need to go to a dentist, they say, yeah, you should go check out mine. So that's not a bad thing, it's just something to realize that if you're not getting referrals from other places, it potentially could be because you're not, you don't have a, a solid plan for that. And then the other thing that was uh, astonishing was that of all the people that we asked, only 30% post on Facebook more than once per week. So that's like, this is like, the, of all the things that I could, that we could focus on, this is a pretty like um, interesting number because this, I'm not talking about Twitter or Instagram or any of the other social channels which you should also be on. We're talking about Facebook which is one of the most popular and only a third of you are posting on it more than once per week. Which also explains why when we ask the follow-up question, do you feel like social media is, has helped the revenue of your practice? The answer almost unanimously was no. And I would say, because you're not using it right. It does, nothing works if you do it once every so often. So then, next question, do you use video on your website? So obviously, you know, those numbers, I wasn't satisfied with only 15 responses. I don't know how many of you guys took statistics, but I did, and I know that that's not a very good confidence interval. So then we went back to the drawing board and looked on Google Maps and did another search for 
Uh, again, Hillsboro. Our office is right about here, so that explains why the dental offices around us showed up. And then we started clicking on every single website, and we went through 61 websites and looked on the front page how many dental offices had a video that I could click on right when I'm on there, anywhere on the front page. So before I give you those results, pull out your cell phones again. We'll have a little game. How well do you guys know your own website? So the question is, do you have video somewhere on the front page of your website? That's actually, that's good. So that is uh, re encouraging for us because the 61 websites that we looked at, 12% uh, of them, roughly one out of 10, uh, did have some sort of video on their website. Now I have to say because we, we work with really nice quality video and we're pretty snobby when it comes to that, some of those were like a slideshow that looked like it was made on Windows Movie Maker back in like 1995 or something. We still technically gave it to you because according to Webster, that does fit the definition of a video. But just to, just to point out, still, that means in this room, just like you guys all just told us, one out of 10 of you have video on your website. And then another side note, just to be completely transparent, 4% did have some sort of link that said, click here, go to our YouTube page, or go to our video resources page or something. So why does video matter? And I apologize for this, it's probably pretty hard to read from the back. But I, I'll, I'll explain. The reason that, that we care so much about video is because currently video is the number one way to convey a story, uh, a medium. In today's world, it's the best medium to convey a story and a message to your audience. You can, in, as you saw from Dr. Beneff's video, in less than two minutes, we quickly explained, we saw the doctor, you saw his practice, you saw the outside of the building, you saw the inside, you saw that his staff was friendly and that they were smiling and that they were helping people. And then you get to see what the values are, you get to see why Beaverton Oral Surgeons exist, what they're trying to do, what their goals are. And that all happens in two minutes. And if you were to go try and figure that out and find that out on a website by clicking around, it obviously would take you a lot longer. But the other thing to note as far as video, st video stats go with SEO and all that stuff, which I'm sure Matt and Ian can fill us in on, is that um, when you have video on your website, people stay on your website longer because they're watching that video and they're engaged with that. But the other thing is, a uh, couple statistics on here that I'll point out, 58% of consumers consider businesses that produce video content to be more trustworthy. So when you're looking at, again, I'm talking about millennials and marketing to millennials, if you're creating content, you're, you're exposing more of yourself to that uh, potential patient before they ever get a chance to come in and see your practice. That's, that's building trust because you're showing them who you are and what you do. The other thing is, um, 71% of consumers say that video leaves a positive impression of a business. And then 77% of consumers consider businesses that create online video as more engaged with customers. And that obviously is, if I am working to create any sort of content and share that with uh, the, my patient um, base or the potential patients, I'm making an effort to provide value, just again like Dan was saying, and helping clear, clarify or, or make, make an effort to get to know my patients or help them get to know me. Now, back to this story um, with my teeth. So the reason that I decided to tell this story today is uh, before I chipped my teeth, uh, this, and this happened my freshman year of college, um, I have always been very self-conscious of my smile. And I always felt like whenever I was in a conversation talking to someone, and it, whenever I would smile, I always felt like people were looking at how much space I had in, in my mouth. And uh, uh, my orthodontist told me that apparently for the size that my jaw is, my teeth should actually be twice as big as they are. So I don't know how that gets messed up in genetics, but it is what it is. And my teeth are way too small. So uh, what ended up coming from this was I went to the dentist and a previously cosmetic procedure suddenly becomes non-cosmetic when your teeth are chipped. And the dentist in Helena, uh, that where I went to school, uh, fixed up my smile, made it look great. 
I remember leaving the dentist that day and immediately I took a picture of my smile and posted it online. And I sent my family a picture and a message and was like, look at how awesome this is. And I know that the going back to what I had said about millennials are more interested in buying experiences than they are product. The thing that I think is so amazing about dentists and the work that you guys do is that you're not selling products. You're not selling fillings, toothbr toothbrushes, and toothpaste. You're actually selling a healthy smile, something that literally gives people confidence and allows them to go meet new people, talk in front of people, start companies, do well in school. You are selling experiences, which is exactly what millennials are looking for these days. And that, again, is just my own personal note of I've been there and I know how grateful I was and how excited I was once I had a smile that I wasn't afraid to show off. So the three takeaways for my presentation. If you aren't marketing to millennials, you're going to be left behind. And what we mean by that is millennials, as we said, they're getting older. They're starting to have kids. But the other thing is how many of you have asked your son or daughter or someone else that's in the millennial range how to use your cell phone or some piece of technology? Show your hands. Be honest. Everyone's done that. I asked my brother two months ago how I use the latest Snapchat update because I'm already starting to slip because I, it, it's moving so quickly. But the point is that when you market to millennials, you're marketing to everybody because the millennials are the ones that everyone wants to be young again. Everyone wants to be cool and hip and they all want to be able to use all the social media stuff. And when you market to millennials and you can find the content that is helping them, they're the ones that say, hey mom, hey dad, hey grandpa, check out this online. Did you know that you can do this? Have you heard of this? What a, and they're, they're educating their parents and the older generations on these decisions that they're starting to make. And then the other fact of the matter is that the reason that you're going to be left behind is because millennials are going to continue to get older and that age is still going to go up. And even if you don't have a large demographic of millennials in your practice now, eventually you're going to or you're going to need to. And I can tell you one thing that millennials are not going to stop using social media. They're, they're going to continue to utilize technology as it continues to change rapidly. And yeah, you might be fine for you know, a year or two years or five years, but eventually if you don't start reaching that next level in marketing, it only makes sense that over time, you know, that referral basis is just going to get, keep, keep getting sucked away by the corporate dentistry and the other places that have done this and they are doing it the right way and they are taking the knowledge and the research that people like Dan and companies like that have found is effective. And then the last thing is, it's just a natural, we were sitting here talking about this in, at the office this past week, and all of the things that we were talking about, they want authenticity, they're seeking experts, that's what, and, the, and they want experiences, that's exactly what dentists, ha like you have all of the things that millennials are looking for, you just need to start sharing it and giving that to the, the potential patients and posting that content online so that you can help educate people. And then the very, very last thing is um, if anyone that wants to, uh, this is for, we have, um, I have a thing where I actually hate paper. I can't stand it. So we're a digital media company and we like sending stuff to people and giving stuff out, but we send it out in email in digital form because when I get paper, I scan it into my computer and then I throw it away immediately. So the only paper that I brought was my business card, which is on your desk. But if you guys are interested, we have a lot more information regarding marketing to millennials. We don't want your information just to have it and put it on our email list. And I can also say that we're only going to send you information regarding the dental practice. So this isn't a spam thing, but if you would like to, uh, this will be available to text in for like the next five minutes. Just text in your name, your dental practice, and your email, and we would be happy to send you this PowerPoint presentation digitally via email, and then a couple other interesting notes regarding um, marketing to millennials. Uh, thank you very much. Our email at Sky Studios is info at sky, that's S-K-E-Y-E, -E, like your I, skystudios.com. And you can find us on every social media channel out there. Um, so thank you very much.